Molar compaction is a dry granulation technique used in pharmaceutical manufacturing to make coarse granules prior to compression or encapsulation. Primarily used for pore flowing materials, it can also be used when segregation may be an issue due to large differences in particle sizes for various components of a formulation, or for other reasons. Broadly speaking, a powder blend is fed through a hopper into an area between two counter-rotating rolls. These rolls compress the powder into compacted ribbons. These ribbons can then be milled to achieve granules of a desired particle size that will exhibit flow characteristics that help ensure smooth, consistent flow into tablet dyes or encapsulation machines. Several process parameters can be varied during the roller compaction process that affect the quality of the roller compacted ribbons. Feed rate can affect ribbon quality. Feed rate from the hopper into the area just before the rolls come together, called the nip zone, can result in too little or too much powder being compressed at one time. Poor flow is the main reason to use roller compaction. A screw is used to help feed the powder out of the hopper. The screw speed, or feed rate can be adjusted to allow for optimal control of powder into the compression area. Too much flow can result in binding up the compactor. Too little flow can result in inconsistent ribbon thickness and poor quality ribbons. Optimizing this parameter is important for ensuring the appropriate amount of blend is being fed into the compaction zone. Another parameter variable is compaction pressure. The distance or gap between the rolls of the roller compactor can be varied to either increase or decrease the amount of pressure exerted on the blend as it passes through the compaction zone. If the gap is too large and the pressure is too low, ribbons will either not be formed or they will be friable and easily fall apart. This will not help the formation of free flowing granules downstream from the roller compaction process. Too small of a gap or too much pressure could bind the roller compactor and decrease the efficiency of the process. Roll speed can also affect the quality and efficiency of the roller compaction process. Roll speed, along with other parameters, will determine the retention time of the blend in the compaction area. Roll speed should be optimized to achieve the highest quality and most consistent ribbons possible. Each of these three parameters, feed rate, compaction pressure, and roll speed, need to be optimized together to achieve an efficient process that will produce quality ribbons, which can be post-processed downstream. In a quality by design environment, where a design space is the desired outcome, experimental design can be used to set acceptable ranges for each of these parameters. Critical quality attributes, such as tablet hardness, tablet or capsule weight, tablet friability, or dissolution rates can be affected by poor control during the roller compaction process. If control is poor and inconsistent ribbons are produced, post-compaction milling can result in too many fines and flow can be adversely affected. Inconsistent flow results in poor control of tablet or capsule weight. This may also lead to content uniformity issues with some dosage forms being subpotent hmm. while others may be superpotent. Arr. Ribbon density and porosity affect both downstream processing and final product attributes, one of the most important being tablet dissolution rate. When implementing PAT, density and porosity measurements of roller compacted ribbons can help ensure consistent output of the roller compaction unit operation, alleviating downstream waste and product failures. Using quick, reliable, at-line density measurement techniques, the process design scientist working with formulators, scale-up personnel, technology transfer personnel, and manufacturing can use this in-process check to ensure product quality, process efficiency, and reduce the chance of failure during product quality control testing. True or skeletal and envelope densities can be measured on roller compacted ribbons with Micromeritix AccuPIC and GeoPIC pycnometers. The AccuPIC determines skeletal density by gas displacement. A sample of ribbon is weighed and placed into a sample cup of known volume, which is then dosed with an inert gas. 
the gas is vented into the sample chamber surrounding the sample, entering its pores. Pressure is observed upon filling the sample chamber and discharging the gas into a second empty expansion chamber produce a ribbon volume value. The AccuPIC divides this volume into the sample weight and automatically calculates the skeletal density. The GeoPIC is used to measure envelope density. A ribbon is placed into a quasi-fluid medium that has a high degree of flowability. The ribbon and medium are then gently agitated, compressed, and displacement measurements are taken. When skeletal density measurements are entered into the GeoPIC, along with sample mass, the percent porosity of the ribbon is then calculated. Percent porosity equals one minus envelope density over skeletal density multiplied by 100. Armed with this data, the development scientist or manufacturing support group can have more confidence that consistent product is being developed or manufactured from the roller compaction unit operation. Changes in these data, either within processing of a single lot or batch to batch, can indicate a possible problem with raw materials or incorrect process parameters being used. Used in a PAT initiative, this important control step can help signal either good control or a lack of control. If a lack of control is seen, this at line indicator gives you the option to take earlier action instead of continuing a process that may result in poor quality product that has to be reworked or rejected, saving both time and money.